In this unit, we'll be looking at collecting data. Now, this is all about how we collect the data in order to perform those calculations, such as the mean, median, mode, and so on, on it. Now, when you collect data, it's important you collect it in a very systematic, easy to record, and effective way to analyze the data. So let's start off, first of all, with a definition of why we collect data. Now we collect data in order to find out more information about a real life issue. And before we look at collecting data, make sure we understand, first of all, these following keywords. So first of all, we have primary data. Now primary data is data that's been collected by the individual. Secondary data, however, is data that's been collected by somebody else. Discrete data is data that can take certain values. Now that could be, for example, shoe size, and it has a definite value to it, and we can only select certain ones within an experiment. Continuous data is data that can be measured and can therefore take any value depending on the scale we're measuring with. So an example of continuous data would be height. Qualitative data is data that is given in words, for example, eye color. So the particular characteristic we're recording would be given in words rather than numbers. Quantitative data, however, is data that can be given in numbers. So for example, miles traveled in a particular journey, time taken to complete an experiment, and so on. The responses would be numerical. A sample is a small group that we select to represent a population. And a population is all the people who may have a certain characteristic. If you think, for example, of the population of a country, if we were to take a sample, we would take a certain number of people from that population in order to examine a certain characteristic. And bias, the last one, is something that is more favorable to one thing than another. So for example, it could be a question that would only generate a certain response, be it maybe more positive rather than negative, would be said to be biased. Now, if we look at collecting and recording data, when we record data from an experiment, it's sensible to use some sort of data collection sheet. And then that makes it easy to record the results quickly and effectively. Now, if we look here at this particular data collection sheet, and it's to do with the eye colors of 20 children in a class. So there are their eye colors. We wouldn't necessarily have to have them written down. We could ask the individuals one by one what their eye color was. But you see, the data collection sheet that we have makes it very easy to record quickly and effectively how many students have each eye color. So we have there clearly labeled our four different eye colors, blue, green, brown, and hazel. We have then have our next column, which is the tally column. And tally is using that five bar gate method way of recording, and each mark represents one student. And we would record five students as four marks with a diagonal mark going through them. And then our final column is the frequency column. And that is the amount of students with each certain eye color. So in other words, we'd add up all our tally marks to work out our frequency. So for this particular experiment, this is what the completed table would look like. We have all our tally marks there in the central column, and then we add those up to get the numbers in our frequency column. Now, when you've conducted an experiment with a certain number of people, it's always important you check that the results match the number of people who took the experiment. So if you remember, we actually asked 20 children their eye color, and the total of our frequency column here is 20. So we know we've actually got every result in there. Now, in addition to doing ungrouped data collection sheets, you're also going to have to be able to do grouped ones. And here is an example of a grouped data collection sheet. Now, what I want you to notice is that first column. We're examining weight, but if you notice, it's not just single numbers in each one. We've actually put in an interval on each row. And these are called class intervals. So that first class interval, for example, means all those people who had a weight between 50 and 60 kilograms. And I want you to notice that that extra little mark on the inequality sign by the 60 means that we include 60 in that particular class interval. 
because you'll notice on the second row we also start from 60 but the inequality on that second row shows us that we don't include 60 on that row. And it's for that reason that we must make sure there are no overlaps on our grouped data collection sheet. Because if you have an overlap, you won't know when you're recording where to put a certain individual.